Overwatch is a game that doesn't take itself too seriously, and that's great. I mean, this is a game with talking genius gorillas that can hulk out, a character that blinks around in short controlled bursts of time travel, and magic dragon spirits that can be summed out of a dude's tattoo when he says, With all of that, who are we to judge the concepts or logic of Overwatch? Ah, hell, you know what? Let's do it anyway. These are 10 Overwatch game concepts that make no sense. Number 10. Look, I know Overwatch is a multiplayer game and we shouldn't even have to care about the lore, but here's the thing. The lore exists, it's substantial, and there's also a complete disconnect between what's going on canonically in the Overwatch universe and what's going on in any individual game. Overwatch is supposed to be about a team of heroes, kind of like the Justice League or the Avengers, that all band together to fight against common evil. Only in the game, it's almost always Overwatch members fighting against other Overwatch members, for reasons that aren't entirely clear. Also, Reaper, what the hell are you even doing fighting on the same side as Winston in Soldier 76? I vaguely remember your guys' falling out being a fairly important part of the game's lore. Widowmaker and Tracer, I just watched a video where you two were trying to murder each other. Again, I get it. Multiplayer shooter, don't think too much about the story. But it doesn't make sense. Number 9, this scenario. Uh, hey Zenny, you might want to watch out for that jump rat trap around the corner. Fear not, my friend. For that trap is on the ground. Well, as you can see, I can levitate in the air and pass right over- Fuck! Oh, come on! How did I even trigger it? I'm not even touching the ground! This is bolt! Number eight, while we're on the same subject, how in the world can May even freeze Torbjorn while he's in molten core mode? The guy is literally spewing fire and should turn May's ice gun into a water hose the moment that icy mist even gets close. Like seriously, if I was Torbjorn, I'd be pissed. Molten core! What? Why am I freezing? Fire doesn't freeze! Oh, oh, this is just great! With this is why everyone hates you, you know. Number seven, several of the skins don't match the voice of the character. There are some pretty awesome skins in Overwatch and many that provide wildly different looks for different characters. But here's the thing, Blizzard didn't go through the extra step of updating the voice acting for many character skins that should have a different voice. Like the young Genji skin, for instance. Why does he still sound like a robot? Why does Reaper still sound like the God of Death when he's in his origin skin as Gabriel Reyes? Shouldn't young Jack Morrison sound a little different than the older and grizzled Soldier 76? It's a minor thing, but the extra attention to detail would have gone a long way in making these ultra rare legendary skins feel a little more special. At number six, where do D.Va's mechs even come from? One would have to think that diva has got like Batman money because she treats these expensive ass looking mechs that have unlimited ammo, a shield that can block any kind of projectile, and a rocket booster that is good to go after just a few seconds like it's a wrapper on a Starburst candy. Like, oh, you've served a purpose, you've protected what's important, now into the trash you go. But it's never for long because even after sending one mech to its death after a self-destruct bomb, she just calls in another one like it's not Damn Diva, if they're that disposable, why not just give everyone on the team a mech so that they have an extra life too? And in number 5, let's go back to Diva for a sec. Let's talk about the fact that her ultimate, which is supposed to be the most powerful explosion in the game, and capable of killing any non-shielded character in an instant, can be avoided simply by hiding behind a thin metal pole. Are you kidding me? That's like the equivalent of trying to open an umbrella to protect yourself from a boulder or an anvil that's about to get dropped on your head, which doesn't even work in Looney Tunes by the way. Number four, no McCree, it's not high noon. It's nighttime, or the sun is setting, or we're indoors and I can't really tell what time it is, but it was already high noon like two minutes ago, and by the very definition of high noon, it can't be high noon again. And I know what you're gonna say. It's always high noon somewhere in the world. Okay, yeah, fine, but it, that's not here, where we are, where you're one-shotting my whole team because you snuck around back and dropped down while we weren't looking. Number three, the price of snacks at the movie theater. I don't know if you ever stopped to look at the scenery in the Hollywood staging area before a match, but have you seen the prices of snacks at the movie theater? I know you guys think that we have an important fight right now against the enemy team, but I have to think there are more important things that we can be focusing on when the price of bottled water is the same as the price of a washing machine. Like, damn, I know the world is in a bad place and that it needs heroes, but how could things have gotten this bad? Can you imagine what the price of the actual ticket to the theater must be? I'd imagine instead of having valet parking, you just drive your car up to the theater and then give them your car as payment for the ticket. Look, uh, I'm sorry, man. I, I Ubered to get here. I don't have my car. How many kidneys you got? Um, two? Follow me, sir. Number two, play of the game logic. 
The algorithm used to decide play of the game often just doesn't make any sense. Most people who play Overwatch will be able to tell you of a story where their game-saving play is passed over for a lifesaver play, where a Reaper shot one person who was about to kill a teammate, or worse yet, a Torbjorn. Like, just imagine that we had commentators in Overwatch match that were influenced by the logic of the play of the game system. Farrah flies up and, oh, do you feel a drizzle tongue? Because I feel justice raining from above. Oh, but Mercy comes in with a res, keeping her team in the game. But, oh, oh, what's this? Torbjorn is repairing his turret! Oh, get that away from me! Get that hammer away! No! 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 Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute! The end is near for the champion! And finally, number one, we've covered a lot of fun things that don't make sense in Overwatch, but it doesn't really matter that they don't make sense. However, this does matter. Hitboxes. The hitboxes in Overwatch are just out of this world in terms of how off they are. A Hanzo can shoot an arrow that's an entire head's width away from the actual head and still somehow manage to get a headshot. These deaths aren't even coming from the arrow penetrating the skull, it's more like a heart attack caused by the fear of an arrow getting slightly close to your face. Or maybe your character was allergic to the breeze caused by the arrow whiffing through the air and had a deadly reaction. And I get it, it's overcompensation to make Overwatch a bit of a more friendly game for people of all skill levels to play, but come on, stuff like this is just ridiculous. And that's our list! Look, I hope you guys don't take any of this too seriously, we're just having some fun here, we love Overwatch. And yeah, a lot of these logical leaps have to do with making the game as fun as Blizzard can make it, but we can't help but have a little fun ourselves pointing them out. Are there any moments in Overwatch that make you have to suspend your disbelief to an extreme degree? We want to know what you think, so drop us a comment in the box below, and hey, if you enjoyed this video, it would really help us out if you could click that like button and let us and everyone else know. If you're not subscribed, now is the best time because we put out awesome videos every single day. Thanks for watching, I've been your friendly neighborhood Spidey, you can find me at JurassicRabbit on Twitter, and I'll see you 